In this Unity tutorial, I'm going to show you how to make a first-person controller. A first-person controller is something like this. I'm going to press play on my scene. And in the game view, I could look around with the mouse by moving the mouse. And I could also move around in the scene by using my joystick or using my keyboard. WASD or the arrow keys on my keyboard. Okay? I'm sure you're all familiar with a first person controller from video games. Now let's show you how to do this. I'm going to stop the game and I'm going to show you what I have in the game. Basically, I have a floor. That's self explanatory. That's what I'm going to walk around on. Then I have a structure, which is just a prefab I made out of four cubes, basically flattened out something that I could walk through. And then I have the player. The player um, is just basically a cube that I made the height to. So it's kind of like a humanoid height. And then I drag and drop the camera from my scene. I drag and drop the camera and made it a child of the player. Um, the reason I did that is because we're going to see the world through the player's eyes. So if the camera's the eyes in the scene, I just made the camera a child of the player. And um, an important thing that you have to remember when you do that, when you do drag and drop the camera on the player, is to select the camera and then do a reset so that the camera is centered within the player. Now, the camera's the eyes, right? So if the camera's in the center of my humanoid, that's kind of look, looking out of my belly. I just make sure I have the camera selected and I did one more change after I did the reset. I moved the camera up so that it's kind of looking out of the eyes of my humanoid player. Okay, on the player, um, some of the default objects that were there, the full components are transform, cube, box collider, and mesh renderer. Those are default for when you add a cube to the scene. I manually added a rigid body, and I manually added my first person, uh, first person controller script. To the rigid body, I just froze a rotation on the X and the Z, on the X and the Z. That way, as I'm moving around, um, my character doesn't kind of trip over and fall down. My character will stay standing up. Now let's look at the script. The script takes four parameters. Um, one, it's nice to let the, um, you know, whoever's using your script control how fast you can move around. So I set my speed to 2.5. Then in the script, I'm going to use the camera that's a child over here. So here's my player. Here's the camera. I just drag and drop it there. So my script has a reference to the child camera object. And then I have look sensitivity. As I said, I was moving around with the mouse. And the mouse movement, I just want to control how much I look around when I move the mouse. So the higher the value, the more looking around happens when I move the mouse a little bit. Then the look smooth is basically when I'm looking around the mouse, I may be able to kind of jiggle my mouse around and shake it, but I don't want the scene. I don't want the camera to actually shake and jiggle. I don't want it to be too jagged. So the smooth value is a way to smooth out the movement when I move the mouse. So it's less jagged. Now in the script, let's take a look. It's a little bit bigger than I'm going to show in the window here, but first I'm going to give you a chance to um, copy the script. This is the top part of the script. Uh, I have my member variables. I have the start function and the update function. Update function calls control movement and control look around. Control movement and control look around. Right. So control movement is going to be controlling the movement of my player across the floor on the X and the Z axis. And I get input from the from the player of the X and Z axis from using input get axis horizontal and input get axis vertical. And then what those values are are values from minus one to one. Then I do a transform on this. This is the player since the script is attached to the player. So player dot transform translate. I'm going to move the player on the x-axis this much, and I'm going to move the player on the z-axis this much. I'm not moving on the y-axis, so that's a zero. 
So I take the value from minus 1 to 1, I multiply it by the move speed, and then so that the movement is smooth, I say time dot delta time. Then I do the same thing with Z. So this just moves the player around. The player doesn't turn, the player just moves around. Forward, back, it slides to the left and slides to the right. Then the other function, I broke it up for control of movement. I broke the next one up, control of looking around. Control look around, it's going to use the mouse as input. And the mouse can only move in two directions, basically, X and Y. So I'm going to read the input axis of X, and I'm going to read the input axis of mouse Y. And I'm going to set those equal to a vector, so I have both values in like one variable, mouse direction. Then I'm going to take the mouse direction, which is value from minus 1 to 1 on the X and the Y, and I'm going to multiply the values of minus 1 to 1 by my look sensitivity. So here in the scene, I set my look sensitivity to 10. That means over here, the values from minus 1 to 1 are now going to become values from minus 10 to 10. This is the code here that's going to smooth out the um, change in where I'm looking. So whatever my current look direction is, I'm going to add a look delta, which is the new direction I'm going to be looking in. The look delta is going to be a value between where the mouse says where I'm going to look, and it's going to smooth it out by the smooth value. So instead of just going directly to mouse direction, it's going to pick a value somewhere between mouse direction and the current direction, and then set that to the new look direction. That's what kind of makes the movement smooth. The, um, this function over here, math clamp, I'm going to clamp the value of the new look direction, the y of the new look direction. I'm going to clamp that value down between minus 75 and 75. That means if I were kind of to use the mouse and keep going down, 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 I'm not going to be looking like I'm doing rollovers or backflips. Basically, I could move the mouse down, 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 and when it gets to minus 75, that's like the lowest value. And if I go with the mouse up, 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 the highest value is 75. And I just do that with the Y, so the camera doesn't go flipping over. Now that I have the new direction I'm going to look in, there's an X and a Y for it. I'm going to rotate the camera by that new direction. And the camera rotation, I'm just going to do it on the up and down of where the camera is looking. So I take my child camera and transform its local rotation and I transform it on the, the right axis, which is this x-axis here. I transform it on that axis to look up and down by the amount that was in my look direction, by the y. And there's a minus in front of here because um, basically that just means when I move my mouse up and down, I'm reversing, you know, the way I actually look up and down with a minus. Then here is rotate player. So this will turn the player. It's actually going to rotate the player to the left or the right. So the axis I got to rotate on is the player's actual up axis. So the player's up axis is this right here. And I'm just going to rotate around on the left and the right, to the left and the right. And how much? By the look direction x. Cursor lock state. Since I'm using the mouse to look around, I have, um, I kind of hide the cursor from the screen. This mouse cursor that you're seeing me move around here, I hide it. And I lock the movement of the cursor to stay within the game window. In update, if you press escape, it releases the cursor so that you could see it again and it could move past the game window. Let me see, what else did I not explain? I guess I should explain this. In the input get access, you're putting in these strings, right? And where are these strings defined? What are the different strings I could actually put in to the get access function? These strings are defined somewhere. They're defined in Unity's input manager. And to get to the input manager, I go edit, project settings, input, and here by default, in the Unity project, I have 18 axes defined. This is the horizontal, and here's where I get the string horizontal. And this defines horizontal movement, 
with um, a joystick, the WASD, or the up and down arrow keys. Then there's also vertical, and here's where I get the string for vertical, horizontal, vertical. And then there's mouse X and mouse Y. Let's see if they also are in here. And they are. Here's mouse X, which these are, these are settings to read movement on the mouse in the X direction. And this is mouse Y. This is where I get the string mouse Y. And these are settings for how to read the mouse in the Y direction, up and down. Okay, mouse X and Y. So if I just press the play on the game one more time so we could just see it in action, it's just that simple. You make a cube or whatever player object you want and you can move around the scene and you could go inside and through objects. Use this and use it well. There you go.